a good day today it's warm outside and we're going to do a few things so uh, today i'm not going to ask you to check things because guess what we're going to go on excursion well excursion as far as we can do an excursion at this particular stage i'm waiting for someone to come and help me with today's lesson um, if they've got connectivity and so forth they're going to help me and cover today's lesson. Today's lesson is about internet, the theory, connection, and services. Just quickly run through the PowerPoint before we go on the actual excursion, which is going to be to move to another room in my house. You're not actually physically going somewhere. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to uh, do some buying and informed decisions regarding internet connection and access. So some of the questions you might ask is modem, router, types of connections, ISP, what is an ISP? Um, well, how should we choose an internet service provider based on those criteria, consideration of your access points, data transmission speeds, cap bundle, and then the concept of broadband and Right, okay, everyone with me? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move over to my cell phone at this stage and we're going to get started with the class as soon as our um, internet service provider is able to join us. I'm going to ask him a few questions, right? So please be aware, I'm using two devices here, first time ever. So let's see how it goes. Right, um, we've also got a host. If the host can just please let us know via audio that when our internet service provider arrives. So I'm going to mute myself and then I'm going to go over to my mobile device. Right, can everyone hear me? Oosh. Let's just get away from the positive sound. Right, so we away from the positive sun. I'm just going to quickly to go and fetch my other stuff. All right, I'm not sure if everyone can hear and see me. Are we good with hearing and seeing me, grade 12, or not? Everyone? Okay, can you all see what I'm doing? That's the second question. You can hear me, can you see? In front of you, there should be a few things. All right, so you can see what's going on on my phone, but I can't. So let's, let's just go, all right. So we're using these, we're gonna do this now. Um, I'm not sure if you can see. We're first going to do divide things into wired or wireless technologies. That's the first choice we can make. With wired, we're going to look at ADSL and we're going to look at fiber. And then from the wireless, we're going to look at 3G slash 4G slash Wi-Fi. I've put it here in another color. I'll show you why. Because most of you are just saying, yeah, we're going to go on to Wi-Fi. Right, so let's start off with the technologies that is um, mobile. I hope you can see this. All right, so here we've got some mobile technologies. This is a very old one. This is kind of a new one. But for us to use mobile technologies, we always, always need this thing. Some. This is 
this is what um, we have to use for us to be able to connect wirelessly or using 3G or 4G or 5G. We need this. All right. So here I've got two of them. Let's deal with this one first. So this is a router, very older type of router. But if I open it up, you can see there is a SIM card in it. And that's what we use to connect to a mobile service provider. So what you would do with this one, you would take this, put in the SIM card, plug it into your PC, and you would connect. All right, so that's easy money. This is where the, 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 some of the technology started. Then I went on to this particular device. This particular device is also a mobile router. Now, the way this works is, let's just take it apart again or open it up. There we go. Right, so we open it up. The SIM card goes in there, in that particular part, to the SIM card. Then we place that in, and then we, we plug it in. Right. So you would switch on this particular thing. I think the thing's batteries. Oh, yeah, there we go. You can see some of the green, hopefully. But we would switch it on, and then through a Wi-Fi. So first of all, this one would connect using the SIM card to the op uh, service operator or to your internet service provider. And then you, with your mobile device, would connect to this particular device using your Wi-Fi. So there's two things here that you need to know. The first thing is that there's a Wi-Fi, and the second thing is that there's an internet connection to your service provider from this device. So if you're saying you're connect connecting to the Wi-Fi, let me go and show you what that actually means. That's why I put Wi-Fi there separately. If you're going to connect to true Wi-Fi, you're going to need to use this. I'm going to unhook this now. Whoa, what do we have here? You would see this thing somewhere on a pole, a huge, large pole somewhere. Now, this is a, a router, a Wi-Fi router. <laughs> it's a huge thing. This is the type of thing that you would put into a business that connects directly with a Wi-Fi. So, what do I mean? This part over here is the actual Wi-Fi router, and it uses a dish to connect. If I go here to the back of the router, you would see there's a, a plug for the network cable. The network cable is the one that you would now take to your router. And we've got these little two things here. POE stands for Power Over Ethernet. LAN, Local Area Network. It's those cables. We're gonna, I'm going to show you the cables just now when we do the wired connection. But if you're saying, I'm going to connect via Wi-Fi, only this is actually what you mean a huge dish at the top of your house or wherever you are connected to someone else's wi-fi over long distance apparently it's a wi-fi signal i had this on top of my house and i start because every time it rains or there's just clouds or just something you completely lose signal so it is really very dependent on what it, what it does. That is our dish. Right. So, hi, good morning. Those of you that can see me, could see me. I'm not sure if you can still see me. There we go. I'm back again. I've swapped cameras at this particular stage. Right. So this is the wireless connections that, that, that we've got. Right, so we've got either 3G or 4G or 5G, which are those little modems over there. And then we've got this little, the actual Wi-Fi connection itself. Right, so that's, that's what we've got. Right, let's just go to the chats quickly. 
All right, good morning. Uh, yeah, there's an echo. I hope that echo is gone now. Is the echo gone? Anyone else? Echo gone? Yes, no? Okay. By your silence, I presume the echo is gone. Okay, let's just go back. I'm doing this now from my phone, to be honest with you. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the video. Oh, sorry, not the video. At our next slide, right. So we've done wired or wireless. So we've done that part. Okay, so let's go back to the wired part. So when you connect to the internet, you either use these dot little dongles here or you use one of the other two. ADSL or fiber. Right, ADSL is on its way out. So currently, in, with respect to ADSL, I can only show you this. That's all I can. They used to be, not sure if you can see it properly, there used to be an ADSL router connected to this. Okay, what's the difference between a router and a modem? Modem stands for a modulator, demodulator, modem. Right, it, it actually converts an analog signal to digital and back. Right, so this one, this is not a normal network cable, this is a telephone cable. So from the telephone plug there, it connected all the way to this. The reason why I can't show you an ADSL modem, because my ADSL modem is at school and not at home anymore. Right, but this is a technology on its way out. The one that everyone's talking about these days is fiber. So let me go and show you what's happening to the fiber. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to the chats, let's just see. Oh, you cannot see. We only see your face. All right. You know what I'm going to do? Let's do this. Um, let's do this. Let's take it to the screen. Right, so at this stage you are seeing. Right, okay, there we go. So this is what I've got. This is what you should be able to see at this stage. Am I correct now? Can everyone see what's happening? Let us get back to the Zoom meeting. I'm going to put it back, but can everyone see now? Were you able to see? Oh, okay, good, thank you. Right, okay, so let's go back. As you can see, this is brand new technology for us to use in an excursion classroom. Right, let me just go back to my, nope, I don't want to go gallery. I want to go to my live camera. There we go, right, okay, so this is what I mean. We were doing wireless, 4G, 5G, for those of you that didn't see, we talked about this little router, and we talked about this little router. That's your 3G, 4G little routers. You need the SIM card to go through to the service provider. And on the other side, you can use this thing as a little Wi-Fi network. Right. Then I put here, some of you say, yeah, we, we connect using Wi-Fi. Now, let me show you, just a quick one. I know we've done this, how you would connect using Wi-Fi. This is what you should use when you're saying, I'm connected to my internet service provider using Wi-Fi. A huge dish. There is your Wi Fi connected over there and here at the back. That is a network cable and it goes from power over Ethernet and your LAN. Okay, so when you're saying I'm connected to my internet service provider through Wi Fi, it means you're saying this. That's what you're saying. You are saying I am connecting using this thing. Right, which is incorrect because most likely you're using either this or you're using fiber or ADSL. Right, I'm not going to go back to ADSL because, like I said, all I can show you is this little plug. That's all I can show you. Right, okay, I'm go just going to cover my camera and then we're going to go to the fiber connection. Right, at this stage, I can't see anyone's chats or whatever so ma'am host if the service provider does pitch can you just maybe make him co-host and unmute him so that we can talk about it as well right so here we go 
uh, photos is gone again. Let me get back there. There we go. Right. So this is what I'm talking about today. This is, uh, they call it a PCE, um, con uh, Permanent Consumer Equipment. I can't remember the, what the piece now stands for. But this is part of the fiber. You see there's two lines. There's a small little line there. That is your fiber line. That's the fiber line that comes from the outside into here. And this is what gives fiber. Then, so that gives me internet signal. Then from there, a network cable. I'm going to show you another network cable just now. From there, there's another network cable. Now let's follow this network cable and see where this network cable leads us. So it goes there behind the chair. You can still see it. You can still see it. Now you can't. Now you can see it. Now you can see it. Now you kind of can see it or not, and so forth and so more. Let's just go on. Here it comes out. Over here. Right, here we go. Oh, hang on. What's this? This is a router. This is a, a normal router. Exactly like you would do with the 3G and the 4G with those little dongles that I showed you. But this one connects to fiber. Well, you can plug in something there at the bottom where the USB is. That other one that I showed you, you can also plug it in there or on the side. Okay, but let's take a look. There are some here. Um, these, these ports are for your, for your telephone cable. So this one can also be an ADSL modem, although we're not using it anymore. Then, oops, apologies. Let me just get back to it. Technology. All right, let's do it this way. So that would be better. So this one, and I'm not going <laughs> to unplug it or whatever, otherwise we're going to lose connection. So this one is WAN, Wide Area Network. Remember we said one Two lessons ago, we talked about wide area networking. So it says that's a WAN. You can't see it there, but it says the WAN at the top. So this is the signal, the internet signal that comes in. And now it's distributed. So here is a cable that's going to a device that's been plugged in. All right, so if I unplug this, this is a proper network cable. This is what I'm talking about, a proper network cable. You can see it's got eight different colors. This is a specific way we put those colors together because each color has a special meaning. But all that you need to know, it is a network cable, but it's CAT5E. That's important. That's the important thing that you need to know here. All right, so let's just plug it back in before we lose connection with the Xbox, which is terrible. All right, let's go to the front of the router. Okay, so here, uh, I'm, we're not supposed to advertise, so I'm not advertising, but you can read. So there we've got power. It says wide area networking, so that one is connected, which means I'm connected to the, to the network. Here's my internet setting, right? Now the internet setting is important because that's, I can be connected to the network or to the global network or to in this case, my service provider's network, but I can't be on the internet. So this is kind of what can also happen. And then also what is currently working is my wireless LAN. So this is a fiber connection. So you can see this is a bit more than just having the Wi-Fi. You first of all need that. You need this little piece of equipment. Now this one is from a particular service provider which is a wholesale service provider. So what they do, they sell some of the, the um, infrastructure or to, Vodo, to my service provider. My service provider in turn so sells it to me. But this is what we need for a um, fiber connection. And you with your Wi-Fi, oops, apologies, let's go again. You with your Wi-Fi is going to connect to this part over here, this particular router. That's where you are going to connect to. 
Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go off the phone now. I'm going to stop sharing because if I'm going to go back to where my PC is, there's going to be a lot of noise again. So I'm just going to mute this and I'm just going to go off my phone and then I'm going to go back to the PC. It's kind of like the end of the excursion for it as it is now. Right. Let's just get out of here with Zoom. Let's go back to Zoom. I'm going to. Kind of holds, oh, he hasn't, he has, he hasn't. Conrad, how are you this morning, sir? Well, yes, sir. Can't complain. Sorry about that. I was just showing them uh, for me the kind of the differences between, um, between ADSL and uh, 3G and all of that. The re, um, uh, boys and girls, he, uh, this is Conrad. He's from Megabits, he's an internet service provider uh, that provides an internet to people. Conrad, I'm not sure if you want to switch on your video as well so that people can see you. I'm also going to switch on my video so that you can see me uh, if I can. <laughs> we, we, we in uncharted waters today. And there we go. So, right, there I am. It looks uh, that I'm not looking at the screen at this stage. Ah, there's Conrad. Welcome, Conrad. Welcome to the class. Uh, so, this is the second part of the excursion. Conrad is an internet service provider, and uh, we are just going to have a short discussion about a few things. Uh, feel free in the chat. I'm back at my computer, so I can uh, view the chat. Yes. And also view the chats. Um, so if you've got questions, feel free to ask Conrad. Um, that's why I brought him in because he's the expert. He's an internet service provider. Okay, Conrad, if you can maybe just give us some background about what you guys do as an internet service provider. What services you give uh, people? Uh, well, as an internet service provider, um, we provide both, well, Fiverr and LTE, which is the two main main connections, uh, what main internet connections. Um, then we also do providing such as hosting space um, uh, for, for websites and so forth. But then we also do uh, local, local on-site um, uh, support as well for for hardware issues and things all right so if uh, people have got some issues they'll find you at megabits.co.z am i correct 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 all right okay sorry can you maybe just explain to us um okay so on the one side you've got fiber um do you work with your fiber through uh, some wholesaler or someone or do you uh, directly provide fiber um it, it, well depending on the backbone but um we've got a wholesaler Okay, so you've got a wholesaler. And the backbone is what? Can you explain to us the backbone? Uh, well, in this area, it's, it's the company who, who has actually laid the fiber lines. And in my area, it's Vumital. Right, okay. So where I am, I'm in Kenton Park. That would be Vumital for me as well, because I'm at my home. Can you ex uh, explain to us a bit more about the LTE, how that operates? Um, is it is it wired? Is it wireless technology? Because this is kind of seem uh, to be the, the go to word at this particular stage. Yes, yes. Um, LTE is is um, wireless network um, running off um, the cell the same network as the cell phones do. Um, so depending on how your cell phone cell phone signal fits into the range of the towers will depend on uh, your your access or not. All right. Okay. Do you guys still provide ADSL? Uh, very, very slim. Very slim, but it's still there. It is still there, yes. All right. Okay. Um, le let's move over to speed. Uh, you guys give people um, a, a contract based on speed. Uh, we call it speed and cap and that type of thing. 
Can you maybe explain a bit too more to us how your contracts work with the consumer? Uh, well, the speed is based on how, how fast, um, well, for an example, how fast you'll be able to get the file. And um, the cap is um, how many um, of the files you can get till you reach that size in total. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, is there a popular package amongst your amongst your customers that um, that, that that you've got? Um, when it comes to fiber, it's mainly everybody's gone for for a basic uh, ten meg um, speed package on um, an uncapped policy with no with no limits on the space. All right. So basically. Um, the, the, the 10 meg is they able to upload and download with, at 10 megabits per second. Am I correct? Correct. Right. Now, the, there's a, a, a question called contention. Um, contention, can you maybe explain to us what that means? Because that's an important concept. Um, contention ratio has got to do with the um, a bit, an allocation between yourself and so many other users on that line. So, obviously, if you're staying in an enclosed off area, everybody there needs to get fiber, but it's all joining onto a single point. And it's, it's how many are connecting to that point on that single line then outwards um, where you get your contention ratio. Right, and that can influence the speed as well of the internet connection. Correct. All right. So, if I do not want to share that band with, with the rest of the customers in the estate. Am I going to pay more for my own line? Uh, yes, no, you will. Um, generally, you need a, probably a business package. All right. And the business package are in the thousands. Am I correct? Very correct, yes. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got an example here from Afri Host, which is going to give me a 10 megabit line for 7,000 rand a month. But then again, the contention is one to one, which means it's only me on the fiber line. But that contention ratio is dependent if when those users use those lines, am I correct? That is also correct, yes. So yes. it depends on the more people in that area that are online, that are using fiber at the same time will affect you. All right, thank you very much. That I think is very important. Those people did not know about contention ratios and that. Right, another question uh, uh, that I've got is, with respect, you give people an uncapped package. What does that mean uh, for me as the consumer? Um, there's no limits on um, the amount of stuff you can download. Whereas right. on a cap package, uh, for example, you're downloading a one gig file and you've got a hundred gig cap, you'll only be able to download that file a hundred times and then your internet connection will be limited and you won't be able to carry on. Whereas uncapped, uh, you, can, you can just carry on um, and your only limitation is your speed. Oh, that's great. So that's, that's great. So if, I can, if I can manage a 10 meg line and I can download one terabyte, that would be great. Am I correct? If you manage to get it done in the month, yes. Right, yes. So do you employ some form of fair usage policy? Because that also seems to be a buzzword with internet service providers. Um, it was very big with, um, with ADSL. Um, with Fiber, not, it's, not, it's not as um, heavy at the moment, but it, it, I'm sure it's going to, going to start rising as soon as more people move over to fiber. Um, yeah. Fair usage policy, um, even though you're uncapped, as soon as you fall into a bracket or, well, into a class of a high user with, with um, your capacity you've used, then they start limiting your speed. Yeah, now I can attest to that because I'm on a particular package and uh, my service provider's fair usage policy is around 500 gigs, which I kind of reach on the 25th of each month. And then it, it literally goes down to two megabits per second. So a fair usage policy, why would, would a service provider pr uh, put in a fair usage policy on a person's account? Um, it's just so that, um, well, that they, can, they can share the bandwidth, especially on the, the high users versus the, the low users. And the low users are, are suffering on their speed because of a high user constantly downloading. So if they put a fair usage policy in, then um, the, the low, low usage user will, will get more speed at, um, at the times as well. Okay, so it's just to give everyone a fair chance for, for, for that. All right. Okay, 
uh, Conrad, I'm just going to move you over. It, it's going to look like I'm not lo looking at you at this stage like I'm doing now. Not a problem. <laughs> the reason for that is I've got two screens going and it kind of seems uh, tricky and awkward because this is our first excursion outside mm -hmm. the classroom. And oh. yeah, it's kind of a meeting, but um, it, it's something different and we're still trying to get used to this. Right. So as a service provider, you guys provide an internet connection. What else do I need on my or at home for me to successfully connect to your um, internet as an internet service provider? What do I need here at home for myself? Well, firstly, it will depend on um, what you're looking at. If, you're, if it's an ADSL, LTE or fiber um, type of connection or what you have available in your area. Um, so once, once you've done an availability check, if it's ADSL, then you'll need a telephone line. If it's um, LTE, you would need uh, to be within range of the LTE towers for the network. And if it's fiber, it, you'll have to have um, fiber installed in your area firstly. And then once you apply for the package, then the fiber will then go into the house, the fiber line itself, before your modem gets terminated. All right. Okay. So um, I, I've, uh, I don't know uh, if, uh, which time you actually logged in, but I was busy showing the the kids about a CPE for the fiber package. Um, mm -hmm. And then I show them the router. So for a fiber, it, um, to get it from the, from the curb or from wherever into your house, they still have to do some trenching and get a little box called CPE into your house. Am I correct? That is correct, yes. Right. And that CPE, is it a kind of a router as well? Or what is it actually? I know it's, it's from the service provider, but what does that actually do? Um, it's a, it's, it's, it is a router, yes, um, where the service provider directly has, has access to, to that device externally, so they can manage it. And uh, generally, unless you request other packages, um, you can only have one device plugged into it at a time. Okay. All right. That, 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 that is very interesting. That is very interesting. Okay. We've got a, a question here from the group chat. The, the, the question is, how would 5G technology impact on the current Wi-Fi system? I mean, 5G is said to be the new uh, system and it seemed to be very fast. How would um, it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Just uh, in regards to that question, 5G as in the 5 gigahertz on the Wi-Fi frequencies? Rather than, I, I think I'm talking about the LTE here, Carl. If you can maybe just rephrase it, but I think they're talking about the 5G technology in general, which is going to be your, um, your, your uh, for, from the mobile service providers. Yes, this um, I'm coming to that part between the two and a half gigahertz and the five gigahertz. But I think what he's referring to is the the 5G technology um, that that they, they say who are over about the Chinese that can, can look after at our stuff, that type of thing. How do you see that kind of panning out? Is it something you guys are doing at this stage? Um, what do you think in general, your, your comments on, on that technology? Um, well, from what I've seen um, with the growth, um, being with it uh, throughout from the beginning, um, the 3G and 4G, I mean, 4G, they kept, they kept expanding on. Um, I haven't gone very deep into the 5G side of things, but um, it's, it's, it all integrates into the IoT um, interface, which is the internet of things, mm. Mm. Um, where you get your smart home technology and um, things like that, where you can connect them straight to your internet connection at, uh, more, more uh, well, a quicker, quicker, on a quicker connection. Um, <clears throat> and then that's the internet, the Internet of Things is where, where you can manage to, your house remotely, basically, for, for, for those objects. Yeah, so basically a guy wants to change or switch on a light bulb, he can do it from outside his house using the Correct. Internet. I mean, the, the, reason, the reason I say it's just kind of the next step is because with the 4G, 4G technology, where, when it started, it, looked, it started at, um, I think it was 100 megabits a second download speed in essence, mm. uh, if not slower. At the moment, I mean, a new Android cell phone um, can get up to a one gigasecond download speed, sometimes even faster, depending on 
your service provider as well as your tower you're connected to and, and your range to that tower. Okay, right, yeah, so it's, it's just one of those, those things, we'll see where it leads us. Okay, so one of the other questions was the 2.4 gigahertz band versus the 5 gigahertz band. Um, that is specifically only for Wi-Fi. I know some devices don't have 5 gigahertz. Uh, could you maybe just explain a bit of that to us with respect to gigahertz and that type of thing? Um, it's the, the um, transmitting frequency that, that the device runs on. Um, the 2.4 is very wide, well, spread all over the place with, and it's got a lot of interfer interference. Um, something as simple, uh, which I've experienced numerous times, um, light waves from it being daytime can, can cause um, wireless interference for signals. Wow. Okay, that, yeah. that's yeah. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah and uh, giving off the, all that interference, and there's so many um, 2.4 gigahertz frequencies around that they're, they're, they're crossing each other. Um, so where 5G has come in, it's got a, it's got a much shorter range. It's got, it, it supports a faster, faster connection link. And, um, it's, 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 um, not as widespread, not all over the place. And it's more, it's, it's more of a, a solid connection. Okay. So it's more of a focus beam than the 2.4, which is kind of like a scatter. Correct. If you want to call it like that, well, that's very interesting. So if the person's device can do five gigahertz, then they should rather connect to five gigahertz than, uh, than the other 2.4 because they'll just get a better connection. Correct. It will also depend on the chip in the device itself um, with, uh, for your connection's um, stability. All right. Okay. Right. Um, uh, uh, one more thing, um, shaped or unshaped. Um, what does that mean? Do you guys do shaped or unshaped with respect uh, to your... Uh, we generally only do unshaped. Unshaped. Okay, so what does that mean if you're doing only unshaped? Um, the the unshaped is more more along the lines of um, you get you you getting your your package's speed, and it's not it's not shared over. Um, it's not it's not say your 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 um, estate is sharing a um, a line that gets fixed. To work in, 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 in a specific manner. Okay. Um, everybody's getting the direct speed so and connection. Would, would shaping then also include something like, yeah, I only want to do um, a voice over internet or Skype, so I would put my line to, uh, to do that better than as opposed to, let's say, for example, doing email, something like that. Is that what the shaping would entail? And the sh yeah, if 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 it looks at it looks at specific services that you want to be using in the line for. Okay, so shaping means also uh, it's done on the protocol level. Am I correct? Correct. Yes. Okay, so protocols. Yeah, if you can just maybe explain to us uh, in quick. Uh, I see we're fastly running out of time here. What is the protocol? What is it? What is an internet protocol? Well, what's that all about? Uh, the internet protocol is is the means of of the connection. So uh, also for security purpose. So different types of things um, will will need to connect in a, in a, in a different manner. So if it goes through, if it's say voice over IP, it will have to go through a voice protocol, not uh, not to compromise security as well as um, get mixed up with all the other protocols, um, on the receiving side. So it knows what it is and where it must go to. Okay. So, and, and we get different types of protocols. So we get one for, for my email. We've got one for voice over IP. We've got one HTTP. That would be also a protocol, HTTPS. That would be the normal general protocol, which we all use in our browsers. Am I correct? That is correct, yes. All right, cool. And then um, I showed them also an FTP protocol, which is a very old protocol. It's not, not really... Uh, oh, sorry, I'm now getting a bit uh, technical around here. Um, the FTP protocol, there's no security around it. Am I correct? Not um, you do get it, um, SFTP now, which is oh. um, a certified uh, certificate for, for FTP. And then you, there's one down from that call um, with just a secure FTP connection. 
and then there's the, your standard um, unsecure FTP where there's no security. All right, okay. Um, uh, a question around um, the, 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 the protocol, the HTTP, and then this HTTPS with a little lock in the browser and the word and, and the letter S there. Um, what, just from, a, from, a, from, a, from, a, from your side, uh, what is that all about? Uh, how do uh, I know it's about security, but um, if you can maybe just explain to us in general how that would work. Uh, well, basically, for your for, for your own domain, you would you would purchase a, a, a SSL certificate, um, and and that that's your your encrypted connection for your domain. So it's it's your link. As soon as your link reaches that website. That website's um, encrypt, uh, got a got a data encryption with all of its traffic. All right, so um, you guys provide a certificate for us to um, continue working in a safe environment. Correct. Wow, that's cool. I I kind of like these SSL certificates already. So it just makes a transferring of 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 data and that's so much secure and so much safer. Right. Correct. Uh, Conrad, I think I've gone through all of my questions. Um, boys and girls, they, they, there's, there's quite a few here. Come, please. We've got literally five minutes left. Please, if you've got questions, let's, let's hear them. Or I presume then everyone is happy with it. And uh, we can continue. Anyone? Uh, broo, broo, broo. Yeah, everyone yeah. here? Happy? Well, either they all think this is a very beautiful Excursion. Everyone is very happy, and I think you've done very well, Conrad. Telling Thank me you very much. how how everything works because I'm even astounded at at the at the way you've you've handled the, the questions and the answers. Thank you very much for this. Um, we we, we kind of we've we've got two or three minutes. Come, boys and girls, if you've got a question, now's the time because once this guy is gone, you can only find him over the internet. So uh, uh, this so with, with, with what you you showed everyone um, of the different types of devices, uh, did you show them the fi uh, fiber router and an ADSL router and things like that? That's the only thing I can't show them. It's an ADSL router. Oh yeah, actually, uh, but do you have one there? Let's just um, oh, sure. Yeah. That, oh yes. Uh, no, that's just an access point. Oh yes. Uh, quickly, uh, the difference. This one does have one. Yeah. Okay. So that's a true ADSL router. Yes. Okay. Um, supports both um, VDSL, ADSL, and because it's got a WAN connection, um, you can use it for for fiber as well. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. So it's it's one one thing can do all. Right. Correct. This question. Oh, there we go. So the blue one, uh, the blue the blue one is the WAN connection. Am I correct? Ah, uh, correct. Blue is WAN. And the, and the gray one is for the telephone line. Correct, yes. And the yellow ones is for a local area network, which you, if you, if you would put in an Xbox or something like that. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, there is a question, which internet connection would you recommend? Or which factors would you take into consideration? Um, well, considering the way, the way fiber, fiber has gone now, um, any any um, type of type of um, household that's running, I would say ten devices, call it three to five users, each a phone and even a PC. A simple ten meg um, is is more than efficient um, to get to get daily tasks done. All right, and if if they don't have fiber in the area, then obviously LTE. Correct, LTE. Um, there, there are there are sites where you could have a look um, to see the availability in your area. It's generally from the different service providers directly. Um, if you do not fall into a LTE area um, either, then the, your only choice is is still ADSL. That's where the ADSL is still kept. Um, but, yeah, and um, it, and it, or the only other problem is is if you're on a farm. Okay, yeah, that, 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 that would be a big issue where there's actually no signal of anything. And Correct. No right. Uh, what else do you have there that you can show us? Um, which other device you've got there that you can um, use? I've got a network switch. Uh, yeah, what is that all about? That is a very interesting thing. So what, uh, how does that differ from the modem or the router? 
All right, the, the a switch does not have any um, internet um, based points. So no WAN, no Ethernet, uh, no, sorry, no WAN and no um, LTE, no ADSL line to plug into it. It just allows you to, do, um, to expand your local area network um, through cable. Oh, through, only through a cable. So it's got no, no Wi-Fi abilities uh, either. No, it doesn't. Um, it's just those four little yellow ports, it gives you more of those. Ah, yeah, yeah. And you can go up to 2448, that type of thing, yes. Correct, right. yes. Okay, so yeah, the, the, those yellow ports are the, is, is for the local area network. The, the blue one is for the WAN and, and so forth, yes. Oh, that's very interesting to note. Conrad, now we're getting into it. What else do you have there that you can show us? Now we're very um, I've, I've got a, a wireless access point. All right. Um, basically, it's it's cable from from your network mm -hmm. um, to this device. Nothing else can get plugged into it. Um, you, you you don't plug your external internet into it either. It just converts basically uh, that yellow port into an extra Wi-Fi um, connection for a different area. All right. So you can have a, a, a separate access point. Access point is that thing that show up that you connect the Wi-Fi to. Am I correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay, Conrad, we've literally got three minutes left because uh, we're going to get cut off. If we're done or not, we're going to get cut off at around 48 minutes. We're on 45. So what else there you can show us? Um, I've got a, um, a wireless extender. Oh, that's, which, yeah, that's a nice thing. Which, which bounces the wireless network um, from one Wi-Fi to another. Um, get, well, you can use it the same name to just expand the network. The problem with it, though, is if you, you're jumping wirelessly, losing, losing um, signal, and then jumping again. So right. they can be a bit problematic. But um, if you can't get a cable from one end to the other end of your, of, um, your property, that's the way to go, as long as you can see the Wi-Fi. All right. Okay, that's nice. Right. Any other device that you've got there? Uh, I've only got switches, uh, WAN internet connections, and no, that's all on hand. All right. So that, that, that's all your devices. Yeah. All right. Conrad, thank you so much. Um, I think if anything, uh, you know, the, the, the thing about uh, grade 12 is we don't show the kids uh, the, the, the types of things. So I think you've clarified a huge amount of garb garbage and terminology for us. I would really thank you very much for being here and for being our guest today. It was a thrill to have you. I know it's, it's a virtual excursion, but uh, I think the kids, um, uh, the kids really got to know the different types of devices and the difference between wired and wireless technology. You are very good at this. And we're most likely going to use you somewhere else as well. But thank you very much for this. Um, uh, we're going to say now goodbye because we're going to get cut off either way or not way. So uh, thank you, Grade 12, for being here. And tomorrow we're doing Word. We're going to do Mail Merge. And then we're going to do Dates and Times. Looking forward to that class. And then we're going to do some Excel text functions and some maths and stats functions. But Conrad, again, thank you for, very much for being here. It is lovely to be live on YouTube. So <laughs> hopefully uh, you guys are going to be on YouTube as well. But thank you very much, class, and then I'll be seeing you again. Right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.